All right, so. That's it. Let's talk. Mm. There's been a couple of things that I've been wanting to talk to you about lately. All right. Um, I mean, how should I put this? You have this worldview, which involves kind of you and your struggles and what's going on with you. And you need to, you need to let other people have their points. You need to let other people have their moments. Like for example, with my surgery, this was my big thing, you know, because we talk about your surgery a lot because it's a huge thing for you, you know? But this was my huge thing. And I really would have liked you to be there to support me because I was gonna drop everything. Yeah. Like I was gonna try to do anything I could to come out and support you because this is huge. And when my huge thing came up, when my huge, gigantic, life-changing thing came up, it didn't feel like it was mm -hmm. a priority for you, you know? And I was like, hey, so what's the deal? Where is the give and take? You know, I felt totally shouted down. Do you see where, where that, how that feels to me? Like, does that make sense? Yeah. You put me in a place where I started distancing myself from you. And I don't know, I mean, I like you, Gabby, and I think you're a good person, and I want to be able to hang out with you, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, all right. I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't, I'm not telling you this to make you feel like you're a bad person. No, I understand and I appreciate it, but it's true. You're right. I. I've been doing that a lot. And I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> wow. Just the fact that Gabby and I are so close in age and so close in um, in transition, you know, really after a certain point is not enough to maintain a friendship. Really the only reason we started hanging out was because we're both trans and stuff. Because we're definitely two different kind of people, so. We've kind of been growing apart though, kind of, I guess. and you were lifeguarding. <laughs> and like there were two people like swimming and you were like showing me the pool and like you were you and then when you swam you weren't you. It's weird. Whoa. Yeah. Maybe it was a big gender pool. <laughs> it's a metaphor. It's really hard for me to watch kind of parents who are actually involved in their kids' lives and um, identify with their kids. My folks really don't, um, I mean, I get a phone call every couple of weeks or every three weeks or something and it's really not much of a conversation. Look at the duckies. Oh, they're sleeping. I don't know, this whole, whole home business. I don't know. Part of me doesn't want to see them anymore. Like, I know. at all. Especially the way, like, the last few conversations I've gone with my mom. that he is going back has really become a reality. I see in his, I see in those mahogany eyes exactly what he's thinking. I see all his concern, I see his worry, I see his frustration. <laughs> 
And right now, I think he just needs someone to listen and he needs someone to comfort him. And I'll find the ways to say what I need to say before he goes. Binders. I didn't know how happy I would feel when I watched them burn. Man. Like all the ugliness, like emotionally that it represents, comes out when you burn it. You know, it's like we have to wait till every bit of it is gone. Just melt away to nothing. <laughs> 